Hello, this is Keith, aka Clone Freak One, and I'm here to show you how to play a game I made. It's called Excavate. I originally designed it in college as just a project for a packaging design project, and I felt the idea for the game was much better than the actual packaging design that I came up with at the time. This is like the third or fourth design. So it's Excavate, a treasure hunt card game. Why I think you should play it is because, or why you'd be interested in playing it is because it has a randomly generated map. It's not very difficult. It has a lot of screw your neighbor mechanics in it. And it has a digging mechanic that's basically the core um, of the game that I believe that no other board game has done that before. So, if you pay patient with me and stick through the whole video, you can learn how to play Excavate. Um, I'm going to have the print and play files in the description of the video box, and I'm, I'm going to be posting this to the forum at Board Game Geek under the works in progress. This this game has actually been reviewed by um, a group of Australians. They were going to be play testing board games. And filming them, uh, the the project fell out from underneath them. But I was eternally grateful for them to play this, and they seemed to have a good time. I had a good time watching them, and I got a lot of good feedback. All right. Well, without much further ado, I'm going to go and show you how to play the game. All right. So the first things first with excavate is let's go over um, the, the the actual play pieces we're gonna start we got a dice a one six-sided dice or you could have several um, one for each player uh, we have the main deck the map deck and you want to make sure that the MacGuffin isn't in the deck at the beginning the MacGuffin is the is the main uh, objective of the game is to get the MacGuffin and get back to the start tile. Uh, we have the start tile, which is over here. I suggest to put that in the middle of whatever playing area you have. Also, I would suggest that, that you have a much bigger table than this. This is just a small pub table that I'm that I can only fit in my area down here to record but yes there's a stock pile you got player tokens four player tokens it's a four player game um two to four players right now i'm just using sorry pieces sorry tokens um as the player tokens and at the beginning of the game the players choose whichever color they want they can roll the dice to see who goes first, and whoever goes first can also choose which color he has first, I guess. Map deck, MacGuffin, start tile. This is the MacGuffin card to make sure that this doesn't get shuffled into any of the, the, treasure, the treasure deck or the action card deck. Uh, that's why I have it in a different different card protector sleeve. This is the treasure deck, um, which is donated, denotated by the skull guy here for this one, also light blue. But I'd say skull, skull guy right now for those that are colorblind. Skull guy, and this has all the treasures or traps. Um, the, tra the treasures you want, the traps you don't want. These are a way to score points in the game. Also, we have the action card deck, which is this deck with this prototype is denotated by the dragon guy, or light blue, but dragon guy, colored one people. Um, the colored impaired. I'm going to edit that up. Or maybe not. These are the action cards. These action cards help you do other, have give you other abilities. 
besides just the four things that you can normally do um, during your turn. Um, we have the, the treasure track. I'm going to come up with a better name for that. Um, this is where we keep track of what treasures are where. And then when we do that, we'll place the token on the map where denotates where, or notates where this treasure is physically on the map. So to begin the game, I'm going to move these, I'm going to move the action cards and the treasure cards for right now so we have a little bit more room so you can see how this plays out. Um, Begin the game, well, setting up. You shuffle your map deck, uh, making sure that the MacGuffin is not in it. You take the bottom half of your, well, you take the bottom half of your map deck and shuffle it in, in the, in the uh, bottom half and then put the top half back on top. This is to make sure that we don't get the MacGuffin right away. It's just so that the MacGuffin doesn't end up on the top at the beginning of the game. Um, you make sure the start, starting map piece is in the middle. You got your... I'm going to only have two characters for this... Two players for this demo because... Taking... Playing three different characters, three or four characters at the same time. Is not going to be conducive to this playthrough. Um, then each map, each player gets three map cards dealt to them. This is just the be This is just the starting up. Well, technically, this is part of the play, and it's very important. Um, and we take, and the player then gets to look at his map cards. Oh, this is interesting. It's all elbows. Um, and then each player takes turns placing a map piece. And this is just done at the beginning. Um, so right now I've got, we're going to, I'm going to deal with, um, uh, I'm going to talk about placing map pieces and how that works and all the different things about map pieces. Um, right now one of these first map pieces that I have is a elbow it's got a lantern on it and it's got an x x on it and let me let me describe some of these things first these squares are considered uh, spaces on the board normally like no more most, most roll and move games you roll the dice and you move spaces the boundaries of the card also notates where where the ending of these spaces are. I, I saw that in a couple playthroughs, the people weren't getting that this is this is the, the boundary of the space. This the, the boundary of the card is considered the, uh, the second part of the second the, the boundary of the space. So say this is three spaces here. To get across this card, you'd move three spaces. Um, the next important thing about this card is the X. The X is where when this card gets placed, a treasure is going to go, a treasure token is going to go on this space. So when that marker goes there, a treasure, a treasure or trap goes there. A treasure card goes there. So there's now physically this marker notates that there's physically a treasure in that first marker at the first spot on the track and you're able to dig for that in this spot. Now this is where the strategy comes in. I'm just going to leave that there because I'm probably going to be placing, placing it. Also there's a light. This is, this, this map piece is considered lighting. And that has to do with the stealing mechanic, and I'll talk about that later. 
Um, the first player, my, my first player here is going to place a map piece and he's going to place it like that so that it's not far from him and he should be able to roll to get to that space on his first turn. And these need to be, these tokens need to be smaller because it's kind of, kind of confusing where they go. Then the next player, this is the physical next player, and the next player um, draw, uh, looks at and takes his turn placing a map piece. Now there's a couple different map pieces here. It's an elbow like before, a lighted elbow. Um, this is a room card. Room cards are only one space, and these are, cons these are considered to have, these automatically get a treasure on them, but you don't have to dig for that treasure. That treasure is like on a pedestal, sitting in the just just tempting you to take it. But it's also, it also could be a trap, like before. And this this player, though he doesn't immediately let so say, well, however the strategy that he wants to do it, I would I would place this here because ideally. Um, the first player will try and go for this one, but most likely not. He's going to go for this because it doesn't require a dig to get this to get this treasure. And we'll talk about digging in a second. Um, we're just dealing with the map map placement right now. Um, we need a treasure to go there. Whatever this is, and we'll put that there. So that's in the second spot. So there's physically two two places that the player can dig on the map. And two treasures. And then, for sake of time, you can do this. This is there's a couple of different legal legal map um, moves. This is a legal map move. It creates a circle, but there's still space available. So this is where. This is where illegal map moves come into place. Um, when uh, on this turn, the player can put the other player can put this here, um, and this player can't put this here because it doesn't continue the path. When placing map pieces, is it always important to place to continue the path? The path the path always has to be continued. And you cannot dead end into another map card. Like, so this would be a legal map placement. So this character, this 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 person um, would then draw another card, and this one can go. This person would draw another card, and this one would get put on the bottom of the bottom of the map deck, and then this would be the next piece. And all of this would get placed, and then the player would uh, the the last player would put that map piece. So that's the that's the beginning of the setup. This is where um, this is the end of uh, the original setup. And this is big. Well, it's still play. It's still considered play. And let me go over. Some other cards that, uh, that you, other special cards. So we've got on this card. There's a ladder next to this space. This is well a ladder looking. Technically, this is actually a a minecart track, or it would it's our it's considered to be. A part of a fast travel system that I that that is in in the game. It's a, a mine the the mine way or the mine track. Um, when this is when this is in play, um, connected to another map piece, and uh, say that this is here, the uh, player has the ability to use this space to, if they're on this space use one of their movement, one movement, and then another movement to go here, and then another movement to go over there. 
but that's like their fast travel. So, well, this would be considered three moves. One, two, three. It's simple, um, but also the placement of pieces like that, pieces like that are important for strategy if you are moving across the thing. And it could, people, it, it's all up to you how you want to play it. Um, there's a dark, this one has, this space doesn't have light, any light on it. Um, this is considered dark space, and there's a special stealing bonus that's, that's associated with the dark space. There's also, if you've noticed that the room doesn't have a lighted space, that was an oversight on my part, and they're, they're considered, all room cards are considered to be lighted. I'm going to put lanterns on these in, a, in another prototype. But otherwise, they're otherwise considered to be a lighted space. Anything else? That's what the MacGuffin card look, looks like. And when that gets placed, the MacGuffin card, it's considered to be a room, but instead of a treasure going there, the MacGuffin card goes there. I'm considering a, I'm considering making a token that just goes there to, you know, to no, notate that this this card. Well, whoever gets that token gets this card, which explains the rules of the MacGuffin, which I'll get to when we get to that point. Let me put the MacGuffin back in the map. And I'll keep it out because I'm going to need it for later. <clears throat> So I believe that's all the ty different types of rooms that are featured, or different types of cards that are featured in the map deck. So we set up all, we set up the map, the map is ready to go. We're ready to start playing. Then each player is dealt four action cards, which they can look at after they're dealt with. And these cards can be played at any time. Four cards each. They have different different effects on them. Um, I'm not going to go over all of them because they all have different um, different things that you could do with them. Um, and spoils the surprise. Right, we'll we'll let you see this player's card hand. So this player has a vanilla treasure card. This lets me place a a trap a trap treasure marker and a treasure marker one of these one of these in any unoccupied space on the map. So basically, um, they they could put it anywhere except where another treasure marker is or another player or their player token is. Chain wallet. This use when I use this when I pay player attempts to steal roll with you as a target that attempts fails. So, you know, you use this, somebody tries to roll, do a steal roll, you, you can either let them try it and, and have them fail it or um, play it after they succeed it. Poorly drawn map. Remove a treasure token from a select spot on the map and remove the card from the, remove the card from the treasure treasure trap. So this would get, this would discard a tre treasure and a treasure marker and and that can be used strategically in different ways. Um, there's the metal detector. The metal detector allows you to look at one trap treasure card um, if you're standing on a treasure marker. If you see it and it's, it's a trap, it doesn't spring, and if it's a treasure, you still have to dig for it. <clears throat> I'm not 
going to show you the other player player's card because it's a surprise. Um, because end quest, there's you know several other cards to go through. I'm not going to go through all the cards. They are basically self-explanatory. I've written them so you can understand how to use them and an action card can be played at any time unless otherwise stated on the card. The player may use any of the action cards in his hand by playing the card face up on the table and they get discard after after used. Once the action card is played, the player follows the instruction on the card. After the action card is used, the player can have a hand up to six action cards. And then at the end of their turn, if they have more of a hand, more hand, uh, more than a hand of six cards, they have to discard down to six. So that's that. So now we're gonna get ready to get back into normal, get into normal play. And there's two phases. There's two phases of a player's turn. There's the map phase, which the player then draws off the off the top of the map deck and place the card. For this first turn, I'm going to I'm going to say that this was the first the card that the green player, the green player is going first. That's the card that he drew and placed here. Then next is the action phase. During the action phase, the player has the options of doing any two actions from a couple of different actions. The actions are movement, dig, draw a card and steal. So they can do any of these in any order and they can duplicate them twice in a in a turn. So if you wanted to do two movement rolls, you can. You wouldn't be able to dig, you wouldn't be able to draw a card, or you wouldn't be able to steal in those two act in those two movement times, but this was your two actions for the turn. Um, so when the for movement the player rolls the one die and then goes that many spaces. So this the, this play this player rolls three and goes that many spaces. They can go any direction they choose and may stop at any time. They are not obligated to move their their full amount of spaces allowed by their roll. Another action is a dig roll. We'll probably we'll see. Let's see what we let's see. I'm going to redo the roll because I didn't. Like this. For sake of time, so he rolled a six. The green player rolled a six. Um, he can go any direction he wants. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, five. He's gonna go to the go to this room, and that's his first action for the thing. He gets to take automatically whatever card is in the two slot. Oh, and he's got a trap. It's the quicksand. Um, this springs automatically. Uh, the second you go in the room, it's the trade-off of having a room card, uh, room map pieces, because you can go into the room and get a treasure for free without digging, or you can get a trap, and it springs automatically. So this is the quicksand, and with the quicksand, it says roll a die on a roll of four through or through six, you pull yourself out of the quicksand on a roll of one through three, you get stuck for a turn, and you may you may still do all your other phases, but cannot move. So I have to roll, so this trap goes off, I have to do whatever the, whatever it says on the trap card, um, and until I do whatever actions and it resolves. So we roll, <laughs> we got a roll of one. Well, the green guy cannot move for the rest of his turn, and the, the two marker comes off, and I'm gonna just gonna keep it. So keep the quicksand for the turn over here. So I did my move, my one action, my move. If I wanted to take another move, I cannot because of the quicksand. But I can do any of the other things as long as I as long as long as I as long as I can. If I can. So like I can't dig right now because it's in a room. I can't dig for anything. There's nothing to dig for, and I can't steal because I'm not on an adjacent space or or the same space as another player token. So right now the only thing I can do is draw an action card, and which I will do. So 
So this would be the, the next step would be the, uh, the red player's turn. The red would player would draw a map piece and decide where it goes. And he's gonna decide it goes there, or actually over here. We're gonna try and keep this as, let's see, the, the first available map marker, treasure marker is the two. So you put the two there, draws a card off of the treasure deck and places it there. And then onto his action phases. He's gonna do a movement. He's going to do, he's going to do a movement. Oh, he rolled a six. Very lucky he rolled today. Um, he's gonna go to the three space. So one, two, three, four. He plans, he, he, he decides he wants to stop on the, three, the, the, the space with the three token on it. And he decides that he wants to, that he wants to dig. So for a dig action, um, for a dig to be considered successful, he needs to roll a three through six. He rolled a two, so the dig action fails and his turn ends because he made a move. And then he did a dig action. The start of the green player's turn again, and he does his map phase. So he can't place this here because that would end the enemy. That would be dead ending a route. You know, we must keep the route going. So he's gonna put it here. And that's the that's his map phase is done, and now he goes on to his action phase, and he can't do anything. Um, he's going to use some of his action cards right now because he's going to be getting two action cards because that's all he can do for the turn. Um, he's going to use a poorly drawn map and take the take the map piece and discard whatever was here into into the map discard and three gets there. This goes to a discard pile. Then he's going to use his vanilla treasure placement card and he's going to put it on the next space right next to him. And that'll be for him for the next turn. And he's going he place his treasure in there. And then that gets this the vanilla treasure placement card gets discarded. And he draws up to two cards. And that and if he wanted to right now. If he wanted to right now, he could still use any of these cards, but he's gonna hold off on using these cards. And that ends his turn, and then the quicksand would get discarded because he would be considered considered not in the quicksand trap anymore. It took him an extra turn to get out of it. And it's the red player's turn. Well, Let's hope, hope that the red player gets a treasure, and once he gets a treasure, we can we can um, fast forward this a bit. So let's see. He draws a he draws a room card. He's gonna place it there. It's gonna make it hard to put a card there, but um, that's just the way it goes. Or no. Well, I'll put it there, and a treasure. The next available treasure thing is the five. He puts the five in, he draws a card. A map card gets put there. Um, that's the end of his map phase. He's going to decide to make him. Uh, yeah, he's, the, red, the red player is going to make a movement roll to try and get another, get another. Okay, so he's got three spaces. So he moves one, two, three onto this four. Once again, he's going to try and dig. So let's see if he's successful this time. It's a five. He's successful because his three, 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 six, a dig, dig roll is successful. So then he gets to see what's in the four thing. And it is a trap. It's a bear trap. 
roll a die. On a roll of one through five, nothing happens. On a roll of six, discard an action card. Not a terrible trap, but still pretty terrible. But he has a spring trap card, so he's going to use that. And what the spring trap does is when you reveal a trap card, you play this and it has no effect. So no effect on the, the bear trap. So it's the green player's turn. He picks his map piece. He decides he's going to continue the path this way. He's gonna, the four goes there on the X. This gets placed here. And then now it's his turn. He's free to move. He's going to roll. He rolls a five, but he only moves the one space on the three. And then he does a dig action. And he rolls a five. And he gets it. And he reveals what's there. And it's his first his first treasure. This one is five pieces of eight. Uh, I forgot that... This is actually... The treasures in this deck are actually from the old... From the old version of the game that doesn't have the... Um, proper uh, values right this is four million this card is considered to be four million and um, the special ability on this card is multiply this card's value by the pieces the pieces of eight in your possession um, what I mean by this is this is basically like a railroad kind of each one of these you have and it's not the five pieces of eight this is actually just one considered one treasure. So you times each one of these by the number that you have of these. So you have one of these, you have four million dollars. So you only have four million. Um, this is his first treasure, and this is goes in his treasure bag area, which could be anywhere um, on this board, but this basically generally in his area. So that's his first treasure goes in his treasure bag area. And that's the end of his turn. The red player's turn. He gets a map piece. This is getting, it's getting kind of, getting kind of out of hand because I don't have enough room. Um, let's just say that, yeah, that gets placed there and another treasure goes there. Another treasure goes there. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how stealing works. Um, the red, say the red character was over here or on a the same space as the thing um, as the other player. He would then try uh, his, after his movement phase, or it would, if he was already here, um, he's going to try to attempt to steal this treasure that the green player has. So the red player, for a steal, steal to be successful, <clears throat> he must roll a five or a six. Anything else, and the attempt fails. So he's going to make a steal attempt for this treasure. He rolls a two, he doesn't get it. That was his first action. His second action is to do it again. He gets a six, he steals it. And um, when he's stealing, if you're stealing, trying to attempt to steal on an un, unlit space, which we don't have one on here in the map, it would give plus one to the steal attempt. So if you rolled four, four through, four through six, then this steal attempt would be considered, considered legal. So that goes over the basics. Um, the last part is what happens when the MacGuffin gets stolen, or when the MacGuffin gets placed. There's the MacGuffin. I'm going to cut the MacGuffin out of the deck. So we say that the MacGuffin gets placed there, then.
for sake of whatever, we'll put this here, that the MacGuffin is there. And um, we'll have our players you know, within healing range of the MacGuffin. For the sake of this part of the demo, I'm going to um, skip the map phase for each turn because it's just going to make the map bigger and I really don't want to deal with that right now. So we're just going to deal with just the play, um, just the action phase. And uh, the green character is going to roll. He gets a six. He chooses a stop and he gets the MacGuffin card. The MacGuffin card. Now the main way to win the game is to get the MacGuffin back to the start tile in your possession. So when the player is at the start tile and he possesses the Mac MacGuffin, the game ends. And then you tally up the treasure scores. Right now he has no treasure, so that'd be kind of a bummer at the end of the game and it'd be a really quick game. But um, the MacGuffin also has the ability to double all the values of your, of your treasures. So the Spleen of the Sea, it's 3.5 million. It's actually worth now, because he has the MacGuffin, it's actually worth seven million. With the MacGuffin, you can only do one movement phase; it restricts you. So you can't dash. You can't. It's so heavy. You can't. It makes all your treasures heavier. You can't make a mad dash to the end. Um, so, but for sake of time, we'll say that um, the red player. Steals the MacGuffin from the green player. Um, so now he has 8 million, he has 3.5 million, um, and the red player is going to make a dash for the red player makes a dash and gets the makes a mad dash for the end. And that he gets back to the start tile with with the MacGuffin and that ends the game and then we total up the totals and the green player would only have 3.5 million the the red player would have 8 million because of the MacGuffin's ability to double all, all treasures and that's basically the game there's a lot more interaction to it there's a lot more things that you can do you can you, um, it's what come what's what makes the game interesting is the the abilities on the treasures, because every treasure has a, most treasures have ability, except for some of them that are too too expensive, or have negative have negative abilities because they're they're the more valuable valuable treasures. Like um this one, this 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 other one, the spleen of the sea. Whenever you would discard another treasure or trap or other other action card would make you discard another treasure, discard this instead. So if you have a higher level If you have a higher level treasure and another card would say, oh, you have to discard, um, like if the, another player said, well, you have to discard this treasure, you'd say, no, I'm discarding this treasure instead. Or if they say discard a treasure at random, a, a trap makes you discard a treasure at random, you just say, no, I'm just discarding the, the spoon of the sea. And that, you know, things work like that's how it works. It's a simple game. Um, the, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, instruction thing, and I hope you give it a, give it a look at, look at the, um, print and play. If you play test it, if you print it out and play test it yourself, um, uh, give me a shout out at, um, either on Board Game Geek, I'm Clone Freak 1 on Board Game Geek, or if you're, um, you're printing and playing it and you find that something doesn't work um, in the print and play because whatever reason just let me know I have three full prototypes and I have I think four map decks so I have an extra map deck if you're deciding to print and play and you would just not like to print your own map because the map is there and the most the most complicated card to produce because it it is square. Uh, I would suggest 
Um, if you would like me to send you um, a map, a map deck, I can. Um, I think at the cost of shipping, we'll work it out if you'd like to do that. Um, I know that's uh, wishful thinking, but you know, I'm just putting it out there. All right, uh, this is Clone Freak One. I'm signing off.